continuing our busy streak in the Eastern Cape, we race again on Tuesday. And on Tuesday, we will be racing on the poly surface again. We will have the eight races to look forward to, and there are some really decent fields in the lineup, so looking forward to it. We get underway at half past 12 on the dot with race one, which is a maiden plate and we'll be racing over the 1,000 meter trip. Here, numbers for the first, five, two, and one. I'm leading with the Black Manx to beat number two, Sunny Quinn, a newcomer to the Eastern Cape, and number one, Own Your Fate. The Black Manx last time out just run down by a faster finisher in the way of the first time at El Falak. Not at all disgraced considering on that occasion he did race off a lengthy break and it was obvious they just caught him out over the final stages. He'll strip a fitter horse here, does try the poly for the first time. We are hoping he does take to the surface. He is at least drawn neatly in gate two. Do you think he should make a bold bid? Number two, Sonny Quinn will have his first run in the Eastern Cape and... He steps out for the Jean Nell yard, has previously raced on Polly once in Natal, and although he didn't feature, he just missed running fifth, so sure that uh, he'll be just fine on the PE Polly here. The yard do say that he does come with a reputation as being a decent workhorse, so they're just a bit worried about getting too excited about his chances, but he is well, and he is expected to run well, so factor him in there. Number one, own your fate. He is coming back to form. He raced initially in Port Elizabeth off a good run in the poly in Natal. Battled to find his way on his first run locally. Showed improvement in his penultimate and last time out the best yet when running second to life on Mars. Expect even more from him here. Uh, he should be right there. Race two, all to come maiden plate for the Phillies and racing over the 1200 meter trip. First three selections here, one, two, and nine. Number one, Joe Loves. I am a little bit hesitant about tipping her for the win here. Last time out, she raced off Cape Form that looked unassailable, but on the day she was lackluster and it showed in her run. She ran no sort of race at all. Pulled up well beaten and was reported as coughing post-race. The Yard do say that they're expecting a much improved run from her, so that is good to note. But on the line with where to go here, can she turn it around in eight days? It's She's definitely got the form if she comes back to best to win here. And yeah, I'm going to stick with her and hope that the Yard are spot on. Joe loves for the win. Number two, Samida has run two very good races in her stance locally since being introduced to the poly and in her last especially was very unlucky to be going down by only 0.05 of a length in second to Kiara. A repeat of that will see her very competitive again. Number nine is Derecho and it's always a hard ask for a young filly to take on older and the two-year-old daughter of Coup de Gras will take her chances against them in her favour. She is familiar with the poly where she ran a good second with the blinker strike last time out which is um, something to note. She wears them again here and she will jump from pole position draw so I do think she could earn herself a check. Race three over the 1300 meter trip is a maiden plate and my first three numbers here are one, three, and four. El Kasim is the horse I'm leading with. I know that he disappointed last time out. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. He tried a couple of changes that day, and I think the main one was that he raced on grass. So disregard that run. If you look back at his prior poly form, it was very useful. Second, third, third, and second. And if he can get back into that vein, he's going to be a horse that has to be considered for the win. I do think that number three, Jaspiro, is also knocking at the door. He's not disgraced himself in recent starts. Fourth behind winging it, second to Silver Celebrity. Last time out, fourth behind Shades of Blue. He is trying hard and could get it right in an open field. His new stable companion, which is number four, Excelsior, will have his first start in the Eastern Cape for Gavin Smith. His last run in the Cape wasn't great, but don't overlook the fact that it was on sticky going and possibly what tripped him up that day because his runs prior to that had been fair. And if he can get back into the swing of things, he certainly is a horse in this type of field that can earn a check. Race four will be over the mile trip. It's another maiden plate and another race for the fillies and mares. Horses of interest here, five, two, and four. I'm leading with Sienna. I do think this is a very competitive lineup. There are few with chances. Sienna definitely overdue to leave the maiden ranks. Her last four runs resulting in either second or third. And if you have a look at her runs over course and distance, they have been her standout um, 
accomplishments behind far out and corsage so back over course and distance today i do expect her to be very competitive number two in between dreams does look like a horse she has to take very seriously in between dreams has had the three runs locally her last two have been on poly and there have been runs where she has been doing her best work late to run some good races her last especially rounding up in second behind let's rock makes her a contender this afternoon Race 4, Queen Louise undoubtedly dropped the ball last time out. It was a poor run. The yard is battling at the moment. The horses are running a little bit in and out with a touch of the virus. But if she can bounce back to her best, it would show her run races like second, a quarter of a length off of Corsage, and second, beaten only 0.1 of a length by the summons. She is going to be effective here, so don't rule her out. Race 5 is a racing association, pinnacle stakes over the mile, and a real quality field here. Topping the board for me is number one, Mara Mara C, but I do think he's got to really respect horses like the Stable Companions, number five, the Sailing Lizard, and number three, Barberton Silver. Mara Mara C's record does speak for itself. He is a horse that loves the poly, loves course and distance, and has gone from strength to strength locally. Last time out in the East Cape um, Poly Challenge, the third leg over the mile, a clever ride on Thomas Tucker saw him and Earth Hour relegated to second and third respectively. But I don't think that there's any disgrace in that. And drawn here in pole position, very well performed in general. Even though top weight, he comes in best weighted and he should be a huge runner again. Number five, Sailing Lizard did meet Mara Mara C in that last leg of that East Cape Poly Challenge behind Thomas Tucker on that occasion running fourth to him. He's actually... A one and a half kilos better off tomorrow Mara C. So although the best weighted column suggests he's got some work to do on that particular run, he's actually very well in at the weights here. So Sailing Lizard, uh, I do think he's proven that he's got the ability to make his presence felt here and he can't be underestimated. Likewise for number three, Barberton Silver, the mile is probably on the sharp side for him, but the Silvano Gelding races off a break. Sometimes when horses race fresh, they're just a little bit more effective over shorter than they normally are. And with his very um, decent um, tactics of being a strong front runner, I do think he's another horse to respect here. Race six, the Phillies and Mare 64 handicap over the sprinting trip of 1,000 meters. I think this field is really hard to pinpoint a winner in and i do think it's one of the more open races on the card topping the weights as well as the horse that catches the eye form wise is the two-year-old number one all things nice i really really think that two-year-old at this stage has it hard to be top weight in the lineup though so i'm a little bit wary and i am going to go instead with number five angel bouquet to take the victory so number five angel bouquet to beat number one all things nice and then a horse like number three elusive jade Angel Bouquet did run on Friday. She ran a really good race and she beat male opposition in a merit rated 68 lineup to win by a length with Elegant General behind her. It was a good performance and I do think she can be effective here again from gate two in what looks to be weaker than what she took on on Friday. Respect for the two-year-old, number one, all things nice, although certainly at the weight she has it all to do. She does at least have pole position draw on her side, as well as having run her best races over a 1,000 metres, which does stand out. As well, got to admit, having only her fourth run, got the scope for improvement that could carry her and don't write her off. Number three, Elusive Jade, could find the 1,000 a touch on the sharp side, but she is at her best on the poly and has been, has been able to show pace in her races so I don't think she's out of this either you really could carry on to make a case for the majority of the runners in this field race six is very open we stay over the minimum trip of a thousand meters for race seven the betting world dot bet pinnacle stakes where my selections are one four and five I think this is going to be an absolutely awesome race I am tipping number one Viking Moon for the win but the stable companions numbers four what a winner and five Wolfgang under the Jean Nell yard are serious runners Viking Moon at the moment the form he's holding and the results he has been putting out does mark him as Eastern Cape's top sprinter of the moment, but at the weights, what a winner and Wolfgang meet him again, both having met him in the first leg of the East Cape Poly Challenge over 1200, they deserve respect. The Jean Yard is in really strong form and with what a winner having recorded a brilliant third last time out behind the top sort world radar over 1200 when he really is at his best 
over today's 1,000 meter trip that earmarks him as a horse to keep an eye on and his stable companion last time out romped to victory winning by seven and a quarter lengths over 1200 last time out as well he probably is slightly better over 1200 but it wouldn't do to overlook him he's in great form at the moment and not without hope over the shorter trip so i do think race seven is going to be a great race viking moon still gets the nod for me for the win though last of the day and in true pe style saves a nice competitive feel to round up the top weighter, number one, Selfless, is the horse that catches me. I'm tipping him to beat the other end of the spectrum, the lightly awaited number 11, Atkinson Grimshaw. And then I include a horse like number four, Oscar Wilde. Now, Selfless is in very good form, and you've got to really think a lot of his run last time out. We're against a lot stronger in Merit 97 company. He bumped the very useful three-year-old global drummer and went down by only a length and a quarter in third. He was hugely up in class that day and he did a very good job so back down to merit rated 80 company holding form well he is drawn a little bit wide in 10 but in one run on poly he's come through to take the victory and he can come out on top here You've got to give a horse like number 11, Atkinson Grimshaw, a good shout. Also, uh, winner last time out when beating Mousy on over by a two and a half length margin. He's a horse that's also really shown to thrive on Polly since moving to the Eastern Cape where he's run three times for the two wins and he gets a lot of weight from Saltalus and weight is a huge affair in races. He can use this to his advantage. He does look to be a horse on the up in PE. Number four, Oscar Wilde debuted in Port Elizabeth last time out when going down in second behind Lucky Dancer, just needing the run and drawn in neatly here, trying the surface for the first time. The yard do expect a good run and Oscar Wilde can get involved in the shake-up. Another race where you could make cases for a couple more. I do think it's a great way to end the day. Get ready for the PA to kick off at five past one in race two with the maiden plate for Phillies and Mares over 1,200. And in the first leg, I go in with the three numbers. Numbers one, Joe Loves, two, Samida, and uh, number nine, Derecho. They are my first three selections. PA gets two numbers in the second leg, and they will be El Kasim and number three, Jaspiro. I do think that uh, they should be enough to get us through as far as the second leg of the PA is concerned. On to race four and another two numbers here. Horses, both of them overdue to leave the maiden ranks in the way of number two in between dreams and number five, Sienna. Race five and the first of my PA bankers comes up and that is Maramara C, horse number one. I do think that although top weight here, he is best weighted. He's in good form and it would be disappointing if he didn't run in the first three. Number six, the... Race 6, shall I say, the PA gets three selections, one, three, and five. I do think this is a very open race and have included all of all things nice, Elusive Jade and Angel Bouquet. Moving on to race seven, another banker for the PA, and this will be Viking Moon. I'm really looking forward to this race. I do think that Viking Moon is going to have to pull his best performance out to get the better of the Jean Nell runners, but I do think he's capable of it, and I think he's a big runner. That's number one, Viking Moon. Last of the day, always an open affair, and here the PA gets another three selections. My first three horses, numbers one, Saltless, four, Oscar Wilde, and 11, Atkinson Grimshaw. The pick six gets started in race three, and here definite inclusions of the PA numbers one and three, El Kasim and Jaspiro. I go wider and include all of Mutla Ben, who was a bit dis disappointing on local debut, but the yard are expecting better. Number four, Excelsior, who is having his first run locally and can certainly show improvement on his last. And number six, Galapagos Hotspot, who might find the poly 13 a bit tight. But he ran well over a distance too short for him last time out and could do so again here. Race 4, PA numbers 2 and 5. The pick 6 gets the additions of 1, 3, 4, 6 and 7. Bend not break, Latifah's Queen, um, Queen Louise, Pearl of Africa and Chai. As I've mentioned throughout the running, I do make this a race where if the horses in between Dreams and Sienna go missing, there's quite a few with chances. Maramara C, banker in my PA, he will also be banker in my pick six. I do think that he's got to give a lot of respect to Sailing Lizard and Barberton Silver, but I think uh, he can come out on top. 
in race six, which is the fourth leg of the pick six, the PA numbers one, three, and five are inclusions. Another open field here, and I do go quite a bit wider with uh, number two, Elusive Diva, four, Galactico, six, Old Glory, seven, Valgardinia, and horse number nine, Cinderella Beautiful, all going in. I do think that this is a race where we could have a couple of upsets, and there are a few horses that we've got to keep an eye on. Back to Bankering though in race 7, Viking Moon, another Kreef runner that stands out, another horse that does have to respect his challenges but can still come up on top, that's number 1, Viking Moon. Last of the day, always an open affair, definite conclusions in the PA 1, 4 and 11, which are Seltalus, um, Oscar Wilde and Atkinson Grimshaw, and then add in number 2, Dive Captain, 6, Duke of Cards, 7, Scarborough Fair and 8, Beneficiary. Um, want to cover all bases, don't want to be falling out in the last leg. As far as the jackpot is concerned, it mirrors the inner legs um, 2, 3, 4 and 5 of the pick 6 exactly, so no changes there. For the best bet and value bet, I decided instead to go with two best bets and they are Marmara Sea, horse number one in race five and Viking Moon, horse number one in race seven. So let's hope they can fly the flag for us. They do look capable of being bankers and they could give us the opportunity to go a little bit wider in other races of which there are one or two tough ones. All the best and enjoy your Tuesday.